And a film canister that was made into a banjo. Just a film canister? Yeah, it's actually, it sounds really, really cool. Well, let's hear it. I would, but I'm wearing pajama pants and nobody needs to see that. <laughs> Welcome to 4-4, where we get in rhythm with our guests by asking four reverent questions and four not-so-reverent questions. Our guest today is Maya Wynn, singer with Envy of None and a singer-songwriter in her own right, and the star of an upcoming movie about a snowboarding dog. It's called Powder Pup. Think of it like Air Bud, but with snowboarding. I knew that you've been working on a career in music for a long time, but how did it come about that you were in this film? I did two sort of internships with a sound team that did sound for film and television. And so I worked on two films in high school and I started acting my junior year of high school as well, just in local, smaller, independent films in Montana. It's easier to get acting gigs in Montana if you don't have an agent or a booking agency behind you. After I graduated, I pursued it a little bit more behind the scenes. I was a sound utility on some different films, and I did some extra work on bigger shows and films. I was actually just a, a background extra in Metal Lords, which is a film that just came out on, on Netflix. I was other band and you see the back of my head on stage for like two seconds. And I think if you pause it during the mosh pit scene, you might see me getting crushed somewhere in the in the background, like <laughs> thrown around. I was an extra in Shutter Island and Ooh. Leonardo DiCaprio killed me. That's great though. Like what a great way to be killed. I'd, I'd love to be killed by Leonardo DiCaprio. I was on a background extra on this uh, film that had the Backstreet Boys in it and it was a zombie apocalypse film. It was on like the sci-fi network or something and it had the Backstreet Boys and a bunch of other boy bands in it. One of the members I think of InSync rescued me from some zombies and they had this like slow motion shot of blood being splattered on my face and then just this look of amazement as he rode away on a motorcycle. Which was better the snowboarding dog or well I imagine being rescued by a member of InSync is pretty pretty special. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't all that glorious. There's a lot of fake blood happening in that situation. I didn't really get to have a lot of a moment, you know, because you can't have lines as an extra. But with the snowboarding dog film, I got cast as like a major character. So I enjoyed that a lot more, even though getting rescued from a member of InSync was pretty cool too. I came across a lot of facts about you in my research and one of the most interesting things I came across was the song you made up to teach people how to spell your name. <laughs> Where did you find that? Could you demonstrate that? If I remember it, it goes M-A-I-H-W-Y-N-N-E. That's me! <laughs> And it starts out, it's, it's just a whole thing. It's like, my name is Maya Wynn. I like to sing lots of things. <laughs> I can't remember. It's terrible. It's a terrible song. I was hoping it would be kind of like one of those annoying jingles that people can't get out of their head. The only way I'm going to get this out of my head is to look her up and follow her on social media. <laughs> if somebody gave you a boat, what would you name it? David. The origin story of you joining Envy of None is interesting. You win a song contest. The prize is a Zoom session with the, the bass player of Envy of None. You two start collaborating, yeah. and then he says, hey, I showed this to my friend Alex Lifeson, and he wants in. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's exactly what happened. It was a shock, <laughs> but a really great shock. I didn't really understand how Andy and Alex knew each other or how that was really a thing until after that happened. Obviously, I was like, who? How? What? <laughs> we had a lot of time to get to know each other, and I did a lot of research after that. You know, Andy was a part of their management team for a few years on the road and went on tour with them, and so he knew Alex for a long time, and it was just this amazing thing that, that unfolded and, and happened kind of magically. <laughs> You're there and you're, you're rehearsing in person with them. You know, obviously Alex Lifeson is playing differently in this project, but you're with the guy who played in Rush. Do you ever say, hey, do, do the lead for Spirit of the Radio? <laughs> I haven't yet, but we actually haven't had any studio time with the four of us or just performing or writing together in a space. It's all been virtual. We did get to hang out, the four of us. For the release of the album, I went back to Toronto and we did an album release party. And the first time I went to 
Toronto, we all went to dinner together. So we we hung out, but we haven't really like created in the same space together. Your solo work is so different from the work in Envy of None. Will Maya Wynn songs make it into the set list or when you're playing solo gigs, will Envy of None songs make it into your set lists? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I, I feel like I've written so many songs and I love writing in different genres. A lot of the songs I released were specific songs for a project but a lot of the stuff I've released is definitely more towards the folk or indie side or singer-songwriter ballady type thing that I've done so far but I've written over 200 songs and in those 200 songs I've had a few pretty heavy rock songs that I've written for just myself over the past decade that I just haven't recorded and released or put out there really and so the contrast (laughs) between me and the stuff that I've put out and then the stuff that I did with Envy of None is pretty drastic. (laughs) There really is crossover there. I just haven't had the chance to like release that yet. So I'm really excited for this record because I think it will sort of connect some of those dots. Not completely, probably. There is kind of a jump there regardless, but you might be like, oh, there's a thread there. There's some pieces there that make sense. But I do think when we tour, if we tour, we're sort of debating that right now. I know that Alex doesn't want to tour, which makes sense because he did that his whole life and and it's grueling and can be really intense but i do think we'll do at least a few shows together and i might supplement with my own shows in between and i have talked about adding a few of the envy of none songs to my set and one of the songs old strings was one that i wrote anyway so i know i'll at least be doing that song but probably in a little bit of a different version of it in my live set and then probably incorporate at least a couple other ones into the set and do them in a slightly different way. I think that's the fun thing about live shows is you can really rearrange a song in a different way and incorporate it into the set that you're doing. As far as Envy of None, I don't know if we if we do any shows, if we'll do any Maya Wynn songs. I imagine we probably would. We might do a couple other songs as well or cover songs. I could see that as well. Maybe the song about how to spell your name. Yes, exactly. That's a great song. We'll get the whole band to do it. The recent solo stuff that i see out there is this the lucy gray beard stuff that's a character from a hunger games prequel is that right yeah it's almost like you're pioneering a, a new way of expression it's like fan fiction but music that's a great way to describe it and it was really fun it was just you know i was reading the prequel to the hunger games and it had all these songs in it that didn't have any melodies yet they were just lyrics all these people were reading it my friend was also reading it and she was super frustrated because she's like i can't imagine what these songs would even sound like this is so awkward there's just these long periods of lyrics that it's hard to imagine and so she asked me if i would do one of the songs for her and so i arranged one of the songs and i was like okay well maybe let's just film it and i'll dress up as the character and we'll put it up on youtube and then it just it blew up and people were like okay well we'll do this song too and then i ended up you know i was like well now i have to do all the songs in the book and it was really fun and I would just dress up as the character and try to recreate the scene in the book as best as I could. And they did really well. And there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of comments and people that were just like, I love this so much. It helps me understand the book better and this character better. And I love your arrangements. And it just really tapped into that whole The Hunger Games fandom. And, and they're just such kind and amazing people and so supportive. And so it was really cool to sort of be more a part of that in a way. And I, I started getting fan art from people all across the world. What posters did you have on your wall growing up? I I had uh, Brad Pitt in Fight Club and I had the Beatles and a signed poster from Penn and Teller that my parents got me. Kind of weird ones, I guess. <laughs> the one of Brad Pitt and Fight Club was just huge. It was massive. I don't think I'd even seen Fight Club at that point. I watched it later. I don't know why I had that poster. If you were arrested and thrown in jail and nobody told anybody why, what would your family and friends suspect it was for? Probably doing something in my sleep. I sleepwalk a lot. It could be anything, honestly. You, you can't trust sleep me. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing you've done in your sleep? I've run outside. I tried to call the police once. Just last night, I switched rooms five times because I was convinced different things were happening. I, I thought there was booby traps in my room, like with arrows shooting at me. I was like, I can't sleep with these booby traps. I have to go somewhere else. <laughs> so I was, ended up sleeping in the living room. Maya, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. You've been wonderful.